All right, it is now 2.03 according to my clock. We still have a lot of people joining us, but I still want to make the best use of your time. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, if you are wondering, uh, the large majority of people who have answered the question so far feel somewhat confident in their ability to speak about what's going on with the monkeypox outbreak. But anyway, hello, good afternoon. My name is Lisa Briseño. I am a health communication specialist at the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention. I'm a woman with dark hair and wearing a colorfully embroidered red shirt. I'd like to welcome you to today's CDC Emergency Partners Information Connection, or EPIC, webinar. If this is your first webinar with us, welcome. We invite you to learn more about CDC's emergency response communication activities, including past webinars and newsletters on our EPIC website. Today's webinar will be recorded and posted to our website in coming days. If you do not wish for your participation to be recorded, please exit at this time. Closed captions are available for this webinar. To view the closed captions, please click the live transcript button at the bottom of your screen. Be aware that the look of this option may be different depending on your device. We are also offering ASL or American Sign Language and Spanish interpretation. Our ASL interpreter will be pinned to your screen to view throughout the webinar. To access Spanish interpretation, click interpretation at the bottom of your screen and select Spanish. And I'll say that in Spanish now. Para acceder a la interpretación en español, haga clic en interpretation en la parte inferior de su pantalla y seleccione Spanish. Now, before we jump into introducing our speakers, I want to let you know that we'll put links in the chat for viewing. But to ask a question, please use the Q&A button. I'd like to apologize in advance that we may not get to all questions, but we will do our best to answer as many as possible. We would also like to make you aware that there will be some images in this presentation that may be difficult for some people to view. These images will include some close-up pictures of monkeypox rash and a diagram that shows a vaccine being administered. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce today's speakers. Our first speaker is Lieutenant Commander Caroline Schroth, the Physician Clinical Consultations Lead on CDC's monkeypox response. Dr. Schrote is an emergency medicine physician who investigates bacterial special pathogens as part of CDC's Division of High Consequence Pathogens and Pathology. She is a medical officer in the United States Public Health Service and completed CDC's Epidemic, Epidemic Intelligence Service Fellowship in the pox virus and rabies branch. Dr. Schrote obtained her Master's of Science in Public Health from the University of Texas School of Public Health. Her medical degree was obtained from Texas A&M University College of Medicine, and her emergency medicine residency was completed at Cahuilla Health in Visalia, California. Her professional interests include infectious disease, emergency preparedness and response, and outbreak investigations. Second, we'll hear from Dr. Neil Carnes, the LGBTQ plus equity advisor on the CDC monkeypox response. In his home position, Dr. Carnes is a senior health scientist in CDC's Division of HIV Prevention's Capacity Development Branch. Dr. Carnes holds a PhD and a master's degree in sociology, as well as an undergraduate degree in secondary education. He has been working in the field of HIV since 1995. He's conducted HIV counseling and testing with street-based sex workers in Washington, DC, coordinated recruitment, screening, and retention for prevention trials at the University of California, San Francisco's Center for AIDS Prevention Studies, run the Indiana State Department of Health's Ryan White Part B and AIDS Drug Assistance Program, 
overseeing HIV incidence surveillance in Indiana, and assisted the state of Georgia in developing a comprehensive plan to address the prevention, care, and treatment needs of gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men. Dr. Carnes' published works include Queer Community, Identities, Intimacies, and Ideology, as well as Understanding the HIV AIDS Epidemic in the United States, the Role of Syndemics in the Production of Health Disparities. We have a lot of important information to get through, so we'll get started. Again, to ask a question, please use the Q&A button, and we will get to the questions after the presentation. Dr. Schrote, over to you. Thank you, Lisa. Next slide, please. For those of you watching on Zoom, I am the light-skinned, blonde-haired female with my hair pulled back wearing a service dress blues uniform. I'll start by providing an overview of monkeypox. Next slide. By now, many of you have probably heard about monkeypox, but I wanted to provide a brief overview. Monkeypox is a rare disease caused by infection with the monkeypox virus. While monkeypox virus is related to the virus that causes smallpox, the illness caused by monkeypox virus is less severe than smallpox. Although monkeypox has monkey in the name, the disease is only called monkeypox because the first outbreaks discovered in 1958 occurred in monkeys. Despite being named monkeypox, the source of the disease remains unknown. However, African rodents and other forest animals are suspected to carry the virus and sometimes infect people. The first human case of monkeypox was recorded in 1970. Prior to the current global outbreak, monkeypox had been reported in people in several Central and Western African countries or people who had traveled to or been in contact with animals from those countries. However, for the first time in history, the current global outbreak, monkeypox virus has spread widely through person-to-person -person contact. Next slide, please. Now I'll cover some details on the current outbreak. As of September 26, over 25,162 cases have been identified in the United States. While many of those affected in the current global outbreak are gay, bisexual, or other men who have sex with men, not all cases fall into these categories, and anyone can catch monkeypox if they have close contact with someone who has monkeypox, regardless of gender identity or sexual orientation. The type of monkeypox seen in this outbreak is rarely deadly, but some people have higher risk for severe illness, and severe cases so far in this outbreak have mostly been seen in people with monkeypox who are also immunocompromised. Next slide, please. This graph shows case numbers over time in the United States since the start of the outbreak. As you can see, cases started in May on the left side of the graph peaked throughout the month of August and have started to decline over the last month on the right side of the graph. Next slide, please. This map of the United States is color-coded by number of cases per state with darker shades representing a higher number of cases. States with the darkest shade of blue have over 500 reported cases, whereas states that are white have between one and 10 cases. Next slide. This graph shows the number of cases by age and gender. From left to right, the bars represent younger to older people with monkeypox. For reference, the age group with the most cases is shown by the tallest bar in the center, which represents cases aged 31 to 35 years old. These bars are also color-coded for gender percentages. The navy blue color represents patients who identify as male, and you can see this accounts for most cases in this outbreak. Next slide, please. This graph shows the percent of monkeypox cases in the United States by race and ethnicity, which is color-coded using the legend on the right side of the screen. From left to right, the bars show how the race and ethnicity of monkeypox cases have changed over time from the start of the outbreak in May on the left side through September on the right side. As you can see, in the beginning of the outbreak, the cases reported as white made up the highest percent of cases, 
Whereas over the course of the outbreak, we began to see an increase in the proportion of cases reported who were Hispanic or Latino and Black or African American. And over the last couple of months, the trend has now shifted so that the majority of cases reported are among Black or African American individuals. As you can imagine, this is raising a lot of stigma related concerns. You will see in this slide and the previous slide again during Dr. Carnes's presentation. Next slide, please. Symptoms of monkeypox during this outbreak have been somewhat different than what was seen before. The rash for monkeypox in this outbreak can be described in several ways. In terms of numbers, the rash with monkeypox can be anywhere from one single skin lesion, several lesions, or too many to count, and the rash can be located only on one part of the body or could be present on several parts of the body. As for location, the rash can appear on any skin surface and can also be inside the body, including the mouth, vagina, or anus. In terms of appearance, the rash might look like bumps that are firm or may feel rubbery and sometimes have a central dent. These same bumps usually change in appearance during the course of illness and can also look like pimples or blisters before they eventually scab and fall off. For some people, the rash is itchy. Some people don't feel anything, but for others, it can be extremely painful. The rash can be very small and can be confused with other infections like sexually transmitted infections and chicken pox. Next slide, please. Monkeypox usually presents with symptoms similar to the flu followed by a rash. Because some of the flu-like symptoms sometimes experienced with monkeypox can be confused for symptoms of COVID-19 or other respiratory infections, it is important for people who are sick to avoid close contact with others, stay home, and to seek medical care as appropriate. Next slide. Although many people with monkeypox have flu-like symptoms before the rash, during this outbreak, some people develop a rash first before the other symptoms, and some people only ever have a rash. Next slide. In terms of timelines, symptoms usually start within three weeks of exposure to the virus, and the illness typically lasts two to four weeks. If someone does have flu-like symptoms, they usually will develop a rash one to four days later. Next slide, please. Fortunately, the type of monkeypox seen in this outbreak is rarely deadly, and more than 99% of people who get this form of the disease are likely to survive. It should also be noted that some people have higher risk for severe illness, including children under age eight, as I mentioned before, people who have weakened immune systems, but that it also includes people who are pregnant or people with history of eczema. Cases that are not life-threatening can still be very painful. Next slide, please. If you have a new or unexplained rash or other symptoms of monkeypox, talk to your healthcare provider, even if you don't think you've had contact with someone who has monkeypox. When you see a healthcare provider, wear a mask and remind them that this virus is circulating. CDC recommends that people with monkeypox remain isolated at home or at another location for the duration of the illness, except to get medical care. Next slide. Next, I'll talk about the transmission of monkeypox virus. During this outbreak, almost all cases report close, personal, or skin-to-skin -skin contact with someone with monkeypox. Modes of transmission thought to be less common include contact with objects used by or scabs or respiratory secretions from someone with monkeypox. In next slide, please. In the past, monkeypox has also been transmitted during pregnancy through the placenta. Historically, outbreaks of monkeypox have been associated with infected animals. Since monkeypox can spread between people and other animals, especially mammals, people with monkeypox should stay away from pets or other animals. Next slide. So how long can someone transmit monkeypox virus? The virus can be spread from the time symptoms start until the rash has healed, all scabs have fallen off, and a fresh new layer of skin has formed. If someone has any symptoms, it is thought that the virus can be spread. 
Scientists are still researching if the virus can be spread when someone has no symptoms, how often monkeypox might be spread through respiratory droplets, and whether monkeypox can be spread through other body fluids. Next slide. In order to prevent spread of monkeypox, people with monkeypox should avoid close contact with others. We recommend not leaving your home for work and to telework if possible. If someone with monkeypox is around other people, such as when seeking medical care, they should wear a well-fitting mask and cover the rash. It's important not to share items you have touched with others and ask your healthcare provider if you are not sure whether you can still spread monkeypox to others. Next slide, please. In order to protect yourself from monkeypox, avoid close skin-to-skin -skin contact with people with monkeypox, avoid contact with items used by somebody with monkeypox, and wash your hands frequently. Lastly, we recommend getting vaccinated if you are at high risk for being exposed or if you were exposed. Next slide. Monkeypox vaccination is recommended for anyone with a known exposure to someone with monkeypox or for people who are at increased risk for being exposed. People at increased risk for exposure are listed on this slide. They are also available on the website. Next slide, please. There are two vaccines that can be used to protect against monkeypox, Geneos and ACAM2000 but Geneos has been the vaccine most frequently used during this outbreak. Although Geneos requires two doses, it has a lower risk of serious side effects compared to ACAM2000. I also wanted to mention that we are encouraged by early data which indicate vaccination is protecting people from getting monkeypox. Preliminary data from 32 states show that those who were eligible and did not receive the monkeypox vaccine were about 14 times more likely to become infected than those who did get the monkeypox vaccine. For those vaccinated, protection was seen as early as two weeks after their first vaccine dose. Next slide, please. People can contact their healthcare provider or local health department to ask about vaccine eligibility and access. The Vaccine Equity Pilot Program is currently making monkeypox vaccines available to health departments and other organizations who provide care to populations that may face barriers to monkeypox vaccination. Next slide. Last, I'm going to cover monkeypox testing and treatment. Currently, testing is only recommended if someone has a rash consistent with monkeypox. Only a healthcare provider, including some public health departments, can order a monkeypox test. Next slide, please. Most people with monkeypox recover fully within two to four weeks without the need for treatment. But because the monkeypox and smallpox viruses are closely related, Drugs and vaccines developed to protect against smallpox may be used to prevent and treat monkeypox virus infections. Scientists are still researching to understand how effective these treatments are for monkeypox. To learn more about treatment options, please consult your healthcare provider. This concludes my part of the presentation, and I will now turn it over to Dr. Carnes. Thank you, Dr. Schroep. To reduce stigma, the CDC is being transparent with the data we have on diagnoses of monkeypox cases, what we know about transmission, who is experiencing severe disease requiring treatment, who is accessing vaccines, and where we see disparities. In addition, we're also being transparent about how we're attempting to address those disparities. In addition, we are conducting listening sessions and community outreach to populations affected by the outbreak to ensure that our messaging meets their needs. We're also conducting those outreach sessions and listening sessions to provide the latest information to those communities. By following the data and reaching populations with honest, non-judgmental, and non-alarmist communication as quickly as possible, we can minimize stigma. So what is stigma? Our current understanding of stigma really evolved around the late 1800s, but I promise I'm not going to go into a history lesson. 
All the same, it comes from my field of study, so I'm very proud that it is sociology that has really informed our understanding of stigma. Essentially, stigma is an attribute, characteristic, or behavior of a person or group of people that is socially discredited or undesirable. Those who have the attribute, the characteristic, or behavior are shamed and treated as social outcasts. Sometimes the thing that carries stigma is a disease like monkeypox. Our society tends to stigmatize, and let's be clear, it's society that stigmatizes, not the disease. Thus, we treat those with particular diseases in a manner that separates us, the healthy, from them the ill. Think about substance abuse disorder or what we used to call addiction or HIV AIDS or other sexually transmitted infection and how those with these conditions face societal judgment, the cringe factor. Those who have been diagnosed with any number of diseases experience the pains of stigma and being stigmatized. Stigma occurs when we associate a disease with a group of people, regardless of whether those individual members have the disease or not. Consider how we think about onset, uh, adult onset diabetes being a disease of obese people. This misperception stigmatizes diabetes as well as obese people. With monkeypox, as the majority of cases have occurred among gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men, the disease being associated with these men and these men with, this, with the disease. As such, individuals who identify as gay or bisexual have been treated as if they have monkeypox and can spread it to those who aren't gay, bisexual, or other men who have sex with men. When groups of people get stigmatized as spreaders of a particular disease, regardless of whether they have it or not, or whether they are engaged in transmission-related behaviors, they can experience the discrimination and loss of status that follows from the stigma. They become vectors of disease, no matter their particular chance of acquiring or spreading monkeypox. Discrimination resulting from stigma negatively affects those with the disease, those associated with the group stigmatized for having and potentially spreading the disease, as well as their partners, caregivers, family, friends, and communities. So far, I've talked about stigma as an external society to person or population, even individual to individual force. But stigma also impacts the person internally. Indeed, I have heard that some gay bisexual and other men who have sex with men do not want to get the monkeypox vaccine because they fear being labeled and thus stigmatized as a spreader of disease, even when they don't have it, or being labeled gay when they don't want others to know their personal business. This runs contrary to protecting their own health as well as the health of those they work with, socialize, and live with. As public health needs to ensure we are minimizing stigma so that people who need services access those services. Next slide, please. Where we have data on sex and gender, as well as likely transmission-related behavior for the th first three months of the outbreak, we see in this graph that men who reported sexual contact with another man were the dominant group of people being diagnosed. Yet a growing portion of the outbreak, as seen in the yellow, gray, and burnt orange parts of this bar graph, is increasing over time. And these portions of the table tell us that monkeypox isn't just occurring among gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men, and that sexual contact isn't the only means of acquiring the disease. However, this fact did not prevent media and the public from stigmatizing monkeypox or those most affected, pop, uh, most affected by monkeypox. Next, please. This screenshot from a national news program makes light of what to, uh, makes light of what we named uh, what to name the monkeypox outbreak. But in the process, the headline focuses exclusively on the suggestive nature of sexual transmission, stigmatizing and alienating those who acquired a monkeypox through non-sexual means. Next, please. 
This title points to social media and how some are suggesting that the few pediatric cases that have been reported and confirmed are a result of pediophilia and the notion that gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men wish to groom young children to become gay, bisexual, or other men who have sex with men. This too stigmatizes those disproportionately affected. Each pediatric case, and let me be clear, each pediatric case of monkeypox is followed up to understand likely transmission, and no case has indicated transmission occurred as a result of sexual contact between an adult and a child. Further, these Twitter posts play on an existing stereotype that has been disproved that gay and bisexual men are more likely to be pedophiles. That is false. Next, please. Next, please. And these headlines also perpetuate, but also demonstrate, this is how stigma works. In the top headline, we see where the stigma is being used to actively target gay and bisexual men for discrimination. And the below headline also perpetuates the untruth as clearly debunked by those yellow, gray, and burnt orange portions of the bar graph originally shown. Monkeypox in the UK, in the US, and other parts of the world have been diagnosed among those who do not report recent sexual behavior with a man. Next slide, please. So in this graph, we begin to understand who in the US are being disproportionately affected, notably men. The point here is that we have to follow the data. Next, please. I think it pulls up my little circle. There we go. So I want to highlight the men portion, and which is the dark blue. The data and science when addressing the needs of those getting infected. It is critical for public health and medicine to understand who is being affected, how they are being infected, where infection is likely to take place, and when they are getting the disease to understand monkeypox and how it's unfolding. As such, it would be a public health mistake if we did not craft messages and approaches that spoke to men. Also keep in mind, this chart is from several weeks back and new cases have been reported among women, transgender women, transgender men, as well as gender diverse persons. Public health must continue to follow the data where it leads us so that we can speak directly to those getting infected and those with, with an increased chance of exposure. Next slide, please. This graph is actually different than the one shown previously and that it tells us how those being diagnosed identify their sexual orientation. Here, self-identification as gay makes up the overwhelming majority of cases followed by bisexual men, which is represented in the burnt orange. The gray and yellow portions of the bar represent heterosexuals, both men and women. Again, not everyone acquiring monkeypox is gay, bisexual, or a man who has sex with men. So labeling monkeypox as a gay or bisexual men's disease is not only stigmatizing gay and bisexual men, it is also stigmatizing monkeypox and those who acquire it through other means. As stated, public health and medicine have to be attentive to this data and craft messages and partner with all who experience monkeypox. Next slide. Sorry, next please. In this slide, but a new data point I wanna point out from this data. The monkeypox response understands that the primarily affected population is men who report contact with other men, not exclusively, but certainly disproportionately as shown in the blue portions of the bars. Our messages, our outreach and partnerships require that we speak directly to networks of the most affected population in a manner that does not stigmatize, yet is reflective of what we know about the current outbreak. Next slide, please. This slide further refines our understanding of who is getting infected, in this case, by race and ethnicity. As this bar graph shows, as the outbreak progressed, a larger, a larger proportion of cases were being diagnosed among African-Americans represented in the purple segments of the bar graph. 
as well as Hispanic and Latino people represented in the green. Not presented in this bar graph, but a point worth making about stigma is that we know that African Americans are underrepresented in vaccination rate data. And one theory with some anecdotal evidence is that stigma be, may be preventing some African Americans, notably some who are gay, bisexual, or other minimum of sex with men, from accessing vaccines. To address this theory, we are adapting our vaccine recommendations, as described by Dr. Schrode, to allow persons who are at risk to identify their need for vaccine without having to say exactly what criteria they meet. We hope that we can minimize any hesitation to accessing vaccine by skirting any stigma associated with the specific criteria, making them eligible. Next slide, please. CDC is focusing our messages on the facts. The fact is anyone can get monkeypox, though in the present outbreak, gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men are the most affected population. Also, we are encouraging those who are more likely to acquire monkeypox to consider modifying their behaviors in which skin-to-skin -skin contact or extensive respiratory secretion exchange, such as through saliva, are um, minimized. And data released in late August and turned into a nice infograph show that gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men are modifying transmission-related behaviors. We have posted a number of web pages and communicated the symptoms of disease to a range of communication channels, including social media and public health organization newsletters that work for and with affected populations. Finally, we are working directly with communities to ensure they have access to the latest science and data so that they are aware of what is happening. Next slide, please. In addition, we are monitoring the data both domestically as well as internationally and making any adjustments to our approach and messaging in light of this information. And we're doing so in a non-judgmental or stigmatizing way in the language that we use to communicate the science. Next, science, uh, next slide, please. The CDC is also working with healthcare providers, laboratory staff, and medical providers to ensure they have the latest information as quickly as possible so that they can offer their patients the most appropriate treatments based on their patient's symptoms and the severity of disease, as well as to protect themselves and those they interact. Our approach also includes veterinarians, given monkeypox has historically and continues to be a disease passed between humans and animals, both from humans to animals, as well as from animals to humans. Next slide, please. The CDC, the White House, and our other federal partners have conducted listening sessions, as I noted previously, with the public, including specific listening sessions with networks of affected populations, such as with organizations that address HIV. As we hear concerns, such as fear of getting vaccinated due to the stigma associated with the monkeypox outbreak, we are addressing those concerns by modifying our approach. We are focusing resources and information on those who are affected, especially those who most are most affected or disproportionately affected. Next slide, please. Our messages are grounded in the science as well as best practices in communications to ensure those who need information have it accessible in plain language as well as in multiple languages. Next slide, please. The multinational monkeypox response is being informed from what public health and the CDC has learned from HIV, as well as our work to address continued increases in sexually transmitted infections or STIs. For instance, we are avoiding stigmatizing terms such as AIDS or VD or what used to be called venereal disease. My CDC home is in HIV, and any number of CDC staff who typically work with infected populations, including gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men, as well as experts in HIV and STI prevention and care and treatment, are staffing the response. We are working on the monkeypox response because we have learned a thing or two about how to reach populations with non-judgment 
and respect. Next slide, please. As we have noted, we have learned from HIV and STI work that it is best to offer non-alarmist, fact-based messages that incorporate steps and tools on how a person can protect themselves and those they interact with. For instance, the CDC communicated recommendations early on in the response to address the behaviors data indicated were more likely to transmit monkeypox. From HIV and STI work, we understand that affected populations are our partners in the response and as such must avoid telling them what to do over suggesting ways to minimize their chance of acquiring the disease. The CDC has also built communication channels via organization, social media influencers, and leaders in the communities affected by monkeypox. Finally, we applaud the voices of those who are telling their stories and be about being infected, as well as accessing the services and what that's like to ensure affected populations have relatable stories to encourage behavior change and access to necessary prevention, care, and treatment. Next slide. So we get to the point, how can you help? Seek information from trusted sources, and we certainly hope that the CDC is one of those trusted sources. Please access our web pages. They were designed for the public in mind. We encourage you to also go to your local and state health departments, um, Department of Health's websites to get the latest information on what is happening in your area regarding monkeypox. Also, speak up when you see misinformation or stigmatizing messages. Counter those messages. Again, anyone can get monkeypox. At the same time, it is predominantly affecting gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men, but not exclusively. And not all gay, bisexual, or other men who have sex with men will or have or will get monkeypox. And we are acquiring monkeypox in situations that aren't always sexual in nature. Educate yourself about the signs and symptoms, and if you think someone you love may have been exposed, encourage them to seek medical care. Be supportive and do not judge them. Offer support and care in a manner that is respectful, respectful and pro protective of you and them. Thank you. Next slide, please. Thank you so much, Dr. Carnes. Now let's move on to the questions and, and answers. Uh, how similar are US trends in monkeypox cases relative to those in Europe? Is a significant portion of the US beginning to see a slight decline or slowing of new cases? Dr. Schrote, do you wanna take the latter part of that question? I can probably take the earlier part. Sure, go ahead. So we are seeing a lot of similarities. In fact, the monkeypox outbreak, the first cases were diagnosed in Europe, and there is a lot of similarity in the trends um, in terms of who's getting infected as well as how. It's not a one-for-one. One. Um, there's always going to be nuances that are particular to certain locations and geographic. Even within the United States, there's going to be um, variation in those, um, you know, in the in the data, right? And what's happening among who. But overall, um, it is a very similar um, um, profile. And Lisa, can you please repeat the second part of the question? Certainly. Is a significant portion of the U.S. beginning to see a slight decline or slowing of new cases? So while I don't have data uh, divided up by jurisdiction, we have seen that overall the trend is going down, and my hope is that it continues to go down. It's a little too early to say right now if it is um, still going to continue the trend, but we will hopefully learn more about that in the coming weeks. Thank you very much. And I believe this next question would also be for you, Dr. Schrote. How well protected are individuals who receive smallpox vaccine prior to 1972? So I think we do know that previous smallpox vaccination probably confers some degree of protection, but we do not know to what extent. And for every person, 
to what extent a previous smallpox vaccination provides immunity is not exactly known. We do know that people who received smallpox vaccination, if it was, for example, prior to the 1970s, they would be long overdue at this point for another vaccination. So anybody who does uh, identify as being in any of the higher risk groups for potential exposure or anybody who has been exposed, we do recommend that you seek out additional vaccination. Thank you so much. The next question is related. Do we anticipate booster doses every three to five years, similar to the old smallpox vaccination recommendation, so long as supplies permit? I think that's a great question, and we are learning more and more about how long the immunity lasts after vaccination. And part of that answer may also depend on what ends up happening with this outbreak. So please stay tuned for more details about that as we learn more. Thank you very much. Another question. How do we determine when isolation is done? So isolation, typically we think that somebody is uh, has the ability to transmit the virus when they have symptoms. So symptoms could be the flu-like symptoms or rash. So we are recommending that people isolate until they have had complete resolution of all symptoms. And again, as I mentioned, if you are unsure about when you can end isolation, please do reach out to your healthcare provider. Thank you very much. It's interesting how these questions seem to build on each other because the next question is, once you've had monkeypox, would the virus continue to stay dormant in your body after you are well again? Similar to how chickenpox can turn into adult chickenpox, Bell's palsy or shingles later in life? Offhand, I'm not aware of that, but that doesn't mean that that's not possible. I think we are, again, learning more and more about long-term effects and how people's bodies may respond to having infection with monkeypox virus. Thank you very much. Here's another uh, more scientific question. It says, uh, is monkeypox a contact or droplet transmission? Again, we are learning so much about monkeypox. By and large, in this outbreak, we are seeing people with monkeypox reporting having contracted monkeypox from close, sustained, direct contact. There have been uh, some studies in the laboratory performed long ago that showed, you know, potential. Um, that raised the possibility of potential spread through other means. And so we are actively studying to learn more about if monkeypox virus can be spread from respiratory droplets and from other body fluids as well, such as urine, feces, um, semen. Thank you very much. So it sounds like uh, what people uh, can do is to take the precautions that we recommend at this time as we learn more and check back with the CDC website as frequently as they would like to be able to find the latest information. Would you say that's accurate? Yes, that's absolutely right. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have a, a, our next question is one that probably we would like both of our doctors to chime in on as uh, how do we answer the question? Why is monkeypox affecting uh, men who, the men who have sex with community more? I would say a question of why is always challenging to answer, right? Um, especially until we get some hindsight behind us. But you know, there there has been um, some science to indicate that it has been um, passing and potentially may um, not have been noted for a number of years within um, networks of gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men, and just the, the, the conditions for which it becomes propagated more readily, right, happened. Um, again, this is a theory and a hunch, so please do not quote me on this, 
But, you know, my thought is for the last two years, we've all been hunkered down with restrictions based on COVID-19. As those have been lifted, you know, then we begin to socialize more, right, and interact with each other. And in order to experience the skin to skin and exchange of respiratory droplets. And it just happened that in that case, um, it was an opportunity for monkeypox to spread. And that's what disease does. Disease doesn't care about um, gender, sexuality, as Dr. Schro indicated, right? It cares about the conditions in which it gets to propagate. And that's what's happened. Thank you very much. Dr. Schro, would you like to add to that answer? Yeah, I don't know that I have much else to add. Um, Dr. Carnes is exactly right um, that it really, um, you know, just depends kind of on the sort of social and other behavioral factors. And so that's why, you know, we have seen most of the cases among gay, bisexual, or men who have sex with men, but we have also seen cases who are not um, among people who identify. Thank you so much. Our next question is, is transmission solely through direct person-to-person -person contact or are fomites such as shared bed, bed linens known to pose an exposure risk? So we, again, in the current outbreak, we think, and from interviewing current cases, we know that sustained close direct skin-to-skin -skin contact is the predominant mode of transmission. But we do know from other orthopox viruses and studies on monkeypox virus specifically, and orthopox virus is the family of viruses that monkeypox virus is in. We know from studying these that the virus can survive on other objects and items in the environment. And so it's important for this reason that anybody who has monkeypox you know, avoid um, other people using items that they may have used. It's important to launder clothing, bed sheets, and to perform, you know, disinfection in the home if they are living in a shared space. And would would highly encourage anybody who has monkeypox, <clears throat> excuse me, to uh, look on our website as we have a lot of really great information about how you can uh, minimize the chance that it's spread through those ways. But I do want to emphasize that those are not the predominant uh, way that monkeypox virus is being spread. Thank you so much. Our next question I believe would be for you, Dr. Carnes. What planning and or activities have been initiated to conduct or develop educational outreach to young and adolescents, uh, young adults and adolescents through college and high school, LGBTQ plus clubs, community groups to improve their knowledge? So I will say we do have web pages that are specific to youth and adolescents. Um, in some regards, um, I would say that some of that we have um, like a safer sex and social gathering um, um, page that has a printable form. So that is not necessarily particular to youth, but certainly applies to youth that are engaged in behaviors more likely to transmit um, 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 monkeypox. I would also say we are in the development stage, um, but again, so don't quote me, but the intention is to host um, a live um, a Instagram chat or Facebook chat with organizations that serve predominantly youth um, in the LGBTQ community. So we are, um, you know, understanding and reflective of particular networks within the larger LGBTQ plus community to ensure we're getting messages out to the various networks because it's not a monolithic community. It's a series of interconnected networks and um, subpopulations. So our intention is to reach as many of those subpopulations as possible as we move forward. Thank you very much. What are the current recommendations for vaccination of healthcare workers? I am not familiar. Are you Dr. Schrote? So right now we are not actually recommending that all healthcare workers receive the vaccination. Of course, if you do fall into um, one of these categories of having either been exposed to somebody with monkeypox or if you identify with being in one of the higher risk groups, of course, we absolutely would recommend vaccination. But in general, we are not recommending it. Um, we do recommend if you are caring for a patient who has monkeypox or could have monkeypox that you wear the appropriate personal protective equipment. 
Um, and then I wanted to mention as well that um, any laboratory workers and whatnot who work directly with the virus, that might be kind of another area. I know that's not um, necessarily always considered a healthcare worker, but in some settings, some people um, do fall into a category where they would be recommended to get it. So if you have any questions, um, it's important to clarify with your supervisor or management um, to see if you should be vaccinated for um, either smallpox or monkeypox. Well, thank you so much. I do believe we'll need to wrap up our question and answer session for today. Um, but I want to thank both of our presenters. And audience, if you take just a moment to answer the second poll question, we're going to put that up right now. And yeah, and I see that Stephanie just put into the chat that if you have additional questions, you can certainly email us at epic at cdc.gov and we will route those questions as appropriate. Um, I are feeling much more confident, as is everyone else. I know that I'm feeling much more knowledgeable about monkeypox and the monkeypox outbreak right now. We do appreciate receiving your questions as well as your feedback as it helps us to better meet your information needs. To learn more about CDC's emergency response communications, including past webinars, and to subscribe to newsletters and webinar announcements, visit our EPIC page. You'll find the recording of this webinar on epiccdc.gov webpage and YouTube within the next two weeks. And excuse me, that's correction, that's emergency.cdc.gov where you'll be able to find this webinar as well as additional information. I want to note that many of us, especially today, are concerned about the impacts of Hurricane Fiona and Hurricane Ian. I want to note that CDC is also a, sort, a source of information for uh, severe weather events. And we do invite you, if this is an issue that you have concerns about, to check out CDC's pages, particularly as the storm is going to, um, as Hurricane Ian is going to affect a large portion of the country. I see that it looks like there are still some answers coming into the poll question, but I see a lot of people responding that they feel very confident describing what monkeypox is and what is happening in the current outbreak. So again, thank you so much to our presenters. Thank you so much to our attendees. We appreciate you coming. We appreciate you learning more and we appreciate you sharing what you've learned with your networks. Everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you.